Hi guys, this is Maverick Pro, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2019 A-Levels H2 Chemistry Paper 1, Question 14. Alright, Question 14 goes something like this. The graph shows how the initial rate of reaction varies for an enzyme-catalyzed reaction as the substrate concentration changes. So in terms of the information that we have inside this graph, the y-axis will be the initial rate and the x-axis will be the concentration of the substrate. So what we notice is at the beginning when the concentration of the substrate is very low, then as you add more and more substrate, the rate of the reaction increases more or less linearly. So we will comment on the order of the reaction with respect to the substrate subsequently. But you notice eventually the rate of the reaction will taper off and eventually it stabilizes and it reaches a constant value. This is where the concentration of substrate reaches X. So this question is asking which statements correctly describe the situation when the concentration of the substrate is equal to X, when the concentration of the substrate is relatively high and the initial rate of the reaction more or less it is a horizontal value, it is a constant value. So we have three statements to consider. Statement number one, the initial rate of the reaction is affected by increasing concentration of substrate. Statement two, the order of the reaction with respect to substrate is one. Statement three, there are no more enzyme active sites available. Of course, we want to decide which of these statements are true. Then we want to answer the question when we compare options A, B, C, and D. Now, again, what we have talked about previously is at the beginning when the concentration of the substrate is low, you notice as you increase the concentration of the substrate, the rate of the reaction increases. Now this idea involving enzyme catalyzed reaction is whether an increase in the concentration of the substrate would affect the rate of the reaction is affected by the enzyme concentration. Because I will need the substrate to be attached to the active site of the enzyme, then the reaction will be catalyzed, so therefore the rate of the reaction would increase. So what this would mean is at the beginning when the substrate concentration is low, we have enough enzymes to catalyze the reaction, converting the substrate to the products. So at the beginning, when you increase the concentration of the substrate, we will have more than enough enzymes to catalyze all these reactions, so therefore the rate of the reaction will also increase. Now at the beginning, this portion here, Theoretically, this should be a first order with respect to substrate concentration. The more substrate we have, the rate of the reaction increases proportionately. Now eventually, you notice what will happen is the concentration of the substrate increases further, but the rate of the reaction doesn't change anymore. So what happens here is when we say that it is at saturation. Now saturation occurs when the concentration of the enzyme and the concentration of the substrate, it is the same. That means all the enzymes are being utilized and all the active sites of the enzymes are being used up to catalyze the reaction to form products from the substrate. So therefore, any further increase in the concentration of the substrate, there is not enough enzyme to catalyze the reaction. So we can treat the enzyme as a worker in a factory. So maybe if I have 10 workers, so initially, when we put in a small amount of raw materials, then I can have 10 workers to convert the raw materials to products. If you continue to increase the amount of the raw materials, if the workers are not occupied, then I can increase the rate of production. So therefore, the rate of formation of my product will increase. But eventually, if you keep on increasing the amount of your raw materials, we only have 10 workers, right? So eventually, all the workers will be utilized, all the workers will be maxed out. So any further increase in the raw material, we cannot expect the worker to work even harder to increase the rate of the production of the product. So therefore, the rate of the formation of the product will become a maximum point and it doesn't increase any further, regardless of how much raw materials that we are putting in into this factory because the number of workers, it is a constant value, so therefore it will max out at 10 workers. So if I come back to the enzyme catalyzed reaction, the idea is effectively the same. I only have a certain amount of enzyme in this reaction. 
at the beginning the substrate is just like my raw material right at the beginning when the amount of substrate is low and when you increase the amount of substrate i can have enough enzymes to handle all this substrate so therefore the rate of the reaction will increase because i have enough enzymes to convert the substrate to product but eventually when you increase the concentration of the substrate to a very high extent such that it exceeds the concentration of the enzyme then I have too much substrate, I don't have enough enzymes, so therefore the rate of the reaction is being kept or being limited by the concentration of enzyme. So at concentration of substrate equals to X, we have this situation called saturation. Now saturation occurs when the concentration of the substrate exceeds the concentration of the enzyme. You have too much raw materials, you don't have enough workers, you have too much substrate, you don't have enough enzymes. So when this happens, the rate of the reaction will no longer change when you increase the concentration of the substrate because all the enzymes are working at full capacity or we say that all the active sites or the enzymes are being fully utilized. So the idea involving saturation is this. So therefore, we will expect as you increase the concentration of the substrate, the rate of the reaction will remain constant. So therefore, it is a horizontal value when it is at saturation. So what this will mean is the rate of the reaction becomes zero order with respect to the concentration of the substrate because as you increase the concentration of the substrate, there's no change in the rate of the reaction. That's why I write this as zero order with respect to substrate, rate equals to rate constant K multiplied by concentration of substrate to the power of zero because order with respect to substrate is zero. Now, once we understand this concept, then when I look back at the options, I can decide which statement is true, which statement is not true. Statement number one, initial rate of reaction is affected by increasing substrate. Of course, this is not true. We have already mentioned when the concentration of substrate it is equal to X, we know that saturation occurs. So therefore, increasing substrate concentration will no longer change the initial rate of the reaction. So statement one is false. Now, statement two, the order of reaction with respect to substrate is 1. Now this is not true because since the rate of the reaction is not affected by substrate concentration, we can also say that this is zero order with respect to substrate. So therefore order of the reaction with respect to substrate concentration, it is not equal to 1, it is supposed to be 0. So statement number 2 is false. Now finally statement number 3, there are no more enzyme active sites available. Now this is valid as mentioned. When saturation occurs is when all the enzymes are being fully utilized, all the active sites which allow the substrate to be converted to form products, all the active sites are being utilized so there's no more slots available or no more active sites available for further catalysis. So therefore the rate of the reaction becomes kept at a maximum point, it doesn't change or it doesn't increase any further. So statement number three is the statement which is true. Now, once we have decided that statement 1 is false, statement 2 is false, statement 3 is true, then we can look back at our options, options A, B, C, D. In this case, of course, we will have to choose option D, where only statement 3 is correct. So the answer to this question will be option D. Alright, so that was the discussion involving question 14. Now, this question is actually pretty straightforward involving kinetics. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.